NAT, a three-letter acronym that caused IT admin severe pain and suffering. Okay, maybe it's not that bad. But um, here we have in a simple little network, we have the Luna Cloud. Look, look what it did to Luna. Look what it does. It makes you spew rainbows. But anyways, we have um, a public network here. This is the internet. And we have the 299.48 slash 30. I don't know why it says 24, whatever. And here is 208.56.2.4 slash 30 network. And this is the public internet right here. This is the public internet. And Pinky is so excited. She's so excited because she just got a dedicated line here just recently, just today. And um, from the Luna Cloud ISP. And it's a dedicated triple quad gigabit internet line. So she can stream all the 4K videos she desires onto whatever YouTube. So... She has a private network here, the 10.0.0.24, and she assigned the IP address, the public IP address she was given by Luna, the Luna Cloud. And uh, she set a static default route out to dot .9 here, right? 200.99.4.9, right? That's the other end, Luna Cloud router over there. And it's like, sweet, I'm ready to go. So she hops on her PC, she's all excited. And let's ping something on the internet. Let's ping cake over here. So 2085626. And she's trying to get access. And uh-oh. Timeout. So what's going on here? So the problem is the public networks do not route private IP addresses. Big no-no. No. Just no. Public networks should not and do not route private IP addresses. So when it goes out the router here, the packet, um, the public network Luna Cloud routers, when they get the message back, right, it doesn't know about the 10.0.0.0 network private IP address. Like what? And it just drops it. So what we have to use is NAT, network address translation. So the source changes from the 10, the private, when it gets out here in the public network, changes to the source IP address of the router here, of dot .10. So 299.4.10. The reason why we do that is because um, IP addresses are scarce. Because <clears throat> Derpy took like 3 billion of them. I don't know how she did that, but she did. And now we're all stuck stranded with not enough IP addresses. So now... Uh, we have to use this uh, hack net. So it's pretty easy to set up. So all you have to do is make an access list. Access list one permit and a standard access list. Uh, the 10 0 0 10 0 0 0 network and the wildcard mask. So a slash 24. So it's 0 0 0 255. Don't ask me why they use wildcard mask. I mean, it's like a subnet mask, but just invert all the ones and zeros, and this is what you get. Don't ask me why. And here's the fun part. This is where we glue it together. So IP net inside source list one. So we map the uh, access list, the interesting traffic, right? So if it, when the router sees this traffic coming from this network, it's like, ooh, this needs to be translated. So we map that to an interface, right? What are we going to translate this to when it gets to the public network? And we want to translate it to the serial interface here, right here, of 200.99.4.10. And uh, the problem is we could leave it at that if you wanted to, but only one PC would be able to communicate, right? Because what about other PCs on the network? They can't all share, I mean, if there's another PC over here and it goes out to the internet and packets are coming back and forth, it's only going to go to this one because we mapped it to, we only have one public IP address we have to share with everybody. So the router's like, hmm, who do I send it back to? This router, this PC, or this PC over here? So, yeah, only one can communicate, which is a bad idea. 
That's why we use the command overload. So what this does um, is allows you to uniquely identify inside hosts with ports. So if your source port is, I don't know, on a web browser, 5000, it goes out here, it gets mapped, uh, the um, source changes from the private to public, but not only that, but it gets a unique source port number. So you can have theoretically like, I think, what, 65,000 hosts, something around that, 2 to 16, because there's 16 bits for um, TCP and UDP. But uh, anyways, just know that there's a little table, and it uh, maps the public with the private addresses with port numbers. So with Overload, you can have a bunch of PCs in the inside network sharing one public IP address, which is really cool. And then all you have to do next um, is define the inside and outside interfaces. So go to the serial interface, what it's being translated into, go into the public network, say that's the outside. All right. I mean, it makes sense, right? Outside. And then um, you go to the uh, private network, what you're trying to translate, um, and say that's the inside network. So this is the inside interface, and this is the outside. So pretty simple. Four steps. Access list. Bind the access list to a interface with overload, or you can use a pool. That's another topic. If you want to use multiple addresses instead of just one on the interface you assigned here, you can use a pool, but that's another topic. Which is not too hard to set up. And then inside and outside interfaces. So four steps. One, two, three, four. So pretty simple. So let's go ahead and set that up. Let's go to the butter router. And we'll put this on the side. You see what I'm doing here. So access list one permit 10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.255. Being that source list one interface. Overload and then interface PNET outside interface IPNet inside. So cross our fingers and hooves and eyes, and hopefully this will work. So we will go to the PC again, Pinky's PC, and let's try pinging that cake. Sweet! It works! We got the pings! It finally works! Instead of failing, it actually works. So what's going on here is pretty simple. As a packet comes from Pinkie Pie, it goes to the router and it notices that it's coming from this private network we made the access list. So it's like, ooh, we gotta translate this and it's going out the serial interface. So the source address, when it gets out here, the, the little envelope, the little packet, when it gets out here. The source address is not the private anymore. It gets changed into this, the inside local address. Uh, inside global, excuse me. Inside global address here on the router's interface with a port number. Usually it's the same as the source port number on the client. Um, so, and then it sends it out, gets to the cake, because it knows that the destination hasn't changed, you're still going to cake. So when it gets to cake, it's like, oh, I gotta send a reply back. And it notices the source address was 299.4.10. So it's like, ooh, I know how to get there. And the Luna Club knows how to get there. So it gets to this router, and the router has a little table, NAT table saying, hey, I got a packet coming in 299.4.10, but it's coming on in this port. Overload, remember? So it has a little table, remember, maps. IP addresses, inside IP addresses, private to public with port numbers, and um, it notices there's a map, so it sends it out to Pinkie Pie. So effectively, you share one public IP address with many inside hosts. So I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.